hello and welcome to the show and welcome to the second of my new car build series. This one is going to bring us some extreme rally cross combines the fun of ludicrous power figures of a city car build along with having to tackle a part dirt circuit. There are bumps, there are jumps and there are still some surprisingly fast tarmac corners for the cars to be worried about so they're going to be rather tested with this and I also figured what better place to begin than with the Holden Sandman. I do love the look of this vehicle and I also love that it comes in orange and black from standard. Always always a good <laughs> a good thing in my book. Now to the upgrades. For some of these vehicles in this series I have no doubt I'll be using the, the body kit presets. On this one though not so much. There are a couple of options we can well give it a uh, supercharged V8 uh, along with some surfboards on the roof or we can remove the bed cover entirely. I'm not going to be using either of those options for this. I quite like having the bed cover on the back and I want to be having some rear aero just to try and give us some grip. So we uh, yeah, won't be uh, won't be removing that cover. Now as far as engines go, we have got the 6.2 liter V8. I know this one will go over 1000 horsepower. The 8.4 liter V10 as I've, I've driven a 1,100 horsepower version of that, and the 6.5 litre V12. Now, I don't know how much power this engine gets. It starts off with more than the V12 that we had in Forza 6 did, and previous Forza iterations as well. So, I'm hoping for some equally impressive power figures from that. Now, rules for this series, while I'm going to be putting in the most powerful engine that I can, the drivetrain must remain standard. So, in the case of this Holden we're going to be stuck with rear-wheel drive. Likely to be very sideways, I would imagine. Now, the turbos on this bloody hell <laughs> engine, uh, that's a lot of power from them. 319 horsepower, up to 1,019 already in the Sandman. Well, this is going to be even more sideways than I was initially expecting. Uh, we're going to be wanting the uh, splitter of the... Anything that might possibly give us the tidiest of chance of getting some grip I'm going to be taking. We're also, as much as I would like to uh, have surfboards on the roof, I need the downforce. And likewise, the same with removing the cover. We won't be able to have any downforce on it. As far as the bonnets go, uh, we can amusingly put on the supercharger, even though the engine is turbocharged and yeah, that is a, is a thing. For this, I think we're going to go... It saves us a little bit of weight. I think we're going to go all with this bonnet. Now, tyres. We are going to be... Because we've got a part dirt circuit, we're going to be wanting some off-road tyres on this vehicle. We're also going to be wanting as big a tyre widths, but they're not very big. 215s on the front. Please be big rear tyres. Please be big rear tyres. Oh, bugger, we're in trouble. <laughs> we're going to have ludicrous power and pretty damn tiny rear tyres. Well, this is not going to go particularly well. Also, as per my previous builds, I'm not going to be changing wheels on any of the vehicles. I don't like changing some of the, the very classic cars. look utterly stupid with the lightweight wheels. So to keep it fair, it's all going to be exactly the same. They're all going to run on their standard wheels. Likewise, I'm not going to be tuning any of the vehicles. I could tune cars to drive in certain manner, sure, but that's not really showing what the car does naturally. So again, we will be running with standard, standard tunes. In the case of this, I suspect it will be wildly out of control. I'm also hoping that the cars don't exceed S2 class. If they go up into X class, I can't run them. Now, I am fairly confident this won't have the handling to go up into uh, X class. We're also going to be wanting rally suspension. But, uh, yeah, we cannot run cars that will go into the X class. I can't do a rivals mode uh, with them, which means I can't time their laps. Weight reduction time now. We will get the vehicle down to 2,777 pounds. It's not too bad in terms of weight. I mean, the power-to-weight ratio is likely to be 
ridiculous because this engine is looking like it is going to be an absolute monster in the power department although this is now not jumping it up quite as quickly in here as i was expecting it to to 1085 we're still less horsepower than we got from the viper engine turbos please give us a lot and oh oh dear god it's a lot it's uh, 1452 horsepower from the turbos and that's more than the Coenseg Regera. 1,515. Not as much torque. Still got 1,100 torque. That is ridiculous. Okay. Yeah, the game's gone power crazy. I'm perfectly okay with that. That is a lot of power. It's not even at the top of S1 class. I fear for the... Well, for my life. For the <laughs> handling. Um... Yeah, wow, bloody hell. That's not quite what I was expecting in terms of, of PI, nor for power. How fast does the game reckon it'll go top speed-wise? Five seconds to get to 60. I suspect that is mostly because of that five seconds it will all be wheel spin. I reckon it's 235. Okay, Holden. Um, I think now it is time to terrify me. We will purchase all of these parts. 105,000 credits for that lot of upgrades. I'm just slightly curious now that uh, we have done that. I'll let it save. I'm curious as to what it would do to the PI if I did make this all-wheel drive. Uh, imagine... Okay, it would jump it up into S2, but uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Little bit, little bit lower on the PI front, but much higher on the power front. And now I'm going to have to try and drive this car around a rally cross track. This might not go particularly well, but we shall wait and see. Now, the circuit that I am going to be using for this, I've just got to try and now remember where it is. It's not in Outback as I thought it was. There it is. It's uh, from the Yava Valley. We're using the North Plains Scramble Circuit. I did experiment a fair bit with all the various different tracks uh, around... Uh, sort of the scramble circuits and so on. This one had perhaps the most interesting combination of corners and sort of tarmac and dirt sections for this kind of a thing. I'm going to have six laps, a relatively short lap, around the track here. So yeah, we're going to have six laps to try and get these vehicles to go as quickly as possible, try and keep the damn things under control. If we're going to have this much power in a rear-wheel drive monster like this uh, like this Holden, then yeah, trying to keep the damn thing under control is probably going to be the primary concern. Try and not smack it into a wall, try and not spin it on any of the dirt sections. I'm having a suspicion, while this being the very, very first vehicle to go in this series, it will automatically go to the top of the table. I'm not sure it's going to last up there particularly long when vehicles with actual control uh, go around here. Uh, as expected, it's very sideways. It's... <laughs> um, I, I would like some control at some point in, in this run. It's ridiculously fast. It is absolutely stupidly, stupidly fast when it gets the power down. It just doesn't really get power down fourth gear no i'm not going to work fifth probably not going to work either right as we leave the uh, hairpin section at the start of this lap we will head out now onto the dirt there is a little bit of a shortcut that can be taken on this track here i am not going to be using it if you jump to the right you kind of avoid the water splash and and cut the corner basically uh well technically legal with the uh, checkpoints on this track i'm not going to be doing it for this series feels a little bit cheaty to me uh we may end up kind of i say cutting the corners we may end up running close to the inside of some of these corners out here but yeah i'm not going to take that big chunk of the track out and across big jump towards the finish line how fast can we get the holden down towards turn one that is a humongous jump that i wasn't quite ready for <laughs> That was ridiculous. Uh, we are okay. You know, in all honesty, in all honesty, compared to what this could have been like, it's actually not the most uncontrollable of vehicles. 
with the power that is going through this and the tiny, tiny tyres that we have going on, yeah, you're a moron with the throttle, of course. It is going to be sideways. It is going to be sideways absolutely everywhere. But it's still kind of drivable. I'm surprised by that one. We're going to go for a big splash through there. We're going to get bounced off the course. Uh, yeah, I'm quite pleasantly surprised that it's not immediately murdering me at every possible opportunity, although I'm getting lost on this track. It's not a good idea. Get turned through these corners. Now, don't try and get on that power too soon. There's just too much power for me to even use a fraction of it. I think we can kind of use it down towards this first corner, even with the big airtime there. We can kind of use the power. Elsewhere, though, there is just too much for the car's own good. Try and uh, neatly sling it through that uh, chicane, sort of a chicane. The angle of the checkpoints and the angle of the road is actually quite easy to fairly straight line it around the hairpin. Now, this is going to test cars in terms of traction, in terms of acceleration. And while this has got acceleration, it's certainly not got the traction to, uh, to make the most of that power. On to the dirt once more. It's not been too bad out here, although even with the rally parts, we are still getting uh, bounced around a little bit. That uh, water splash jump slightly uh, inconvenient, actually landing pretty much in the puddle. Uh, it's not so good for, for lap time, especially with it sort of bouncing its way back out the other side as well. It's kind of getting pinged around a little bit. And now we just be patient with the throttle. Not patient enough. We're going to lose it on the jump. Ah, okay, well, we smacked the wall quite hard on, <laughs> on the outside there. We've still got a couple more laps to go in terms of finding more lap time. The target, I'm not sure. That might have even been my Evo that I was messing around with out here. Uh, yeah, kind of ignore that. It's going to be rather irrelevant when you're up against this. <laughs> but when you've got this sort of silliness going on, any sensible target really does kind of go out of the window. Uh, we're going to be slithering our way up here. It's delightfully controllable. <laughs> There is just so little grip that it will go sideways, but it goes sideways at such slow speeds that it doesn't really matter. It's quite good fun, but uh, yeah, again, conducive for a good lap time. Not, not, not quite so much as we're going to swing it through these next couple of checkpoints. Don't put too much power down there. Don't go for too much of a burst of acceleration and end up out wide. You're better off being neat and tidy for these next couple of corners, although don't go too wide here either. Uh, across this jump, otherwise we end up in the wall, and that would be bad. Right, okay, we're on for, hopefully, some half-decent laps here. Now to finish this off, got to make sure that I am nice and patient through that opening section. Much better from the Holden. Not really sure what I can get away with under braking, to be honest. Kind of all of my brain power at the moment is being taken up with figuring how much power I can put down and how soon I can get on the throttle out of these corners. The uh, actual braking zones for this car are uh, sort of secondary problems right, right now. As long as I can be neat and tidy on these oh, on these power deliveries, it's kind of the, the main focus in terms of getting some lap time out of the car. Well, this lap here is going considerably better, although we're going to be drifting our way towards uh, another <laughs> another checkpoint. Okay, through this final sort of double apexed corner, really straighten it up for this run towards the line. Across the jump, that is much more like it, and it's much more like it indeed from the Holden. Big air time again. I was not expecting that to be as much of a jump onto the tarmac section. When you've got a car that's accelerating as quick as this, yeah, it turns out that is uh, quite the quite the jump. I'm still, I think, going on the brakes a little bit early. It is pretty decent, actually, at getting slowed down, surprisingly so, when it comes to uh, getting slowed down for that hairpin. Again, yeah, trying to put the power down without just sitting there spinning the wheels in this car. Oh, it's, <laughs> there is so much waiting. So much waiting to get on the power, as you could probably imagine, through the bushes. Some more. I'm going to try fifth. Uh, I'm not sure if fifth is quite going to work through that section. Might be a bit too high a gear. We kind of want to be in a little bit higher gear for some of this, although I think there is so much power, it doesn't really make a huge difference. I'd still have to be 
incredibly, incredibly careful with the Sandman as we jump for the final time, run towards the line. We have gone quicker on that final lap, a 103.6 from the Holden. That is definitely a benchmark of sorts for these monstrous, monstrous vehicles. That's a, um, oh, that's a crazy car, <laughs> crazy car and a half. It could have been worse though. In all honesty, that could have been a lot tougher to drive with such a stupendous amount of power going to the rear wheels. It could have been a lot more uncontrollable as it is, as it turned out it was yeah, sideways, but quite manageable when it was. And if you really focus, you can get a clean-ish lap time out of it. Right. Well, a 103.6 is going to be our target time for future cars to try and beat. But now we are going to uh, take this on the motorway and see how fast I can get it to go. So here we are at the start of the motorway that we are going to be using to, well, try and get these vehicles up towards their top speed. I could use the airfield, but to be honest, a little bit boring doing that. I would much rather try and weave my way through traffic at 230 plus miles an hour with a ridiculously powerful Sandman than just drive down a nice long wide runway. So that's what I'm going to be doing. That's what I'm going to be doing with all of the vehicles as well. So it's going to be a fair test for the lot of them. It also tests their uh, high speed stability, high speed control as well, trying to do this uh, weaving in and out of traffic. Now, the first thing we shall do is dump the aero off the car. Now, the reason I am slightly, uh, slightly uh, trepidation with this, I'm not actually sure, okay, it does go increase our speed a little bit. Sometimes with certain vehicles, if you take the aero off, they actually go slower because they struggle to put the power down. And I wondered if this looked like the sort of vehicle that might have that issue. But uh, there's not the case. It is a slight increase in speed. Can we get 240 miles an hour? Uh, it looks like that's probably pushing it a little bit. Maybe with a nice downhill section. Maybe. Uh, we could get up to 240. Yeah, I think we're not going to get much more out of the, out of the benchmark. Okay. Uh, let's... Quickly get going. I would rather not have a bus getting in the way of my uh, my speed run. Let's get to a proper camera view as well. Right on to the motorway we go. As I said, this will be a pretty good test of the vehicle's high speed stability as well. We have got a fairly nasty quarter actually here to begin with. Probably faster than anything we were really tackling on the uh, rally cross course they're getting up the inside of a bus at 160 miles an hour now dodge the driver tars and then we unleash the v12 fury in this at the 210 miles an hour this is a nice section for some speed uh, fortunately enough visibility as well see the driver tars being well driver tars uh, we have to have a little bit of a lift down there as we begin climbing uphill up to 230 miles an hour again, although struggling for too much more at this stage. There we go, 235, 236, 38, come on, one more, one more mile an hour is all I ask from you, Holden. Can we crack 240 in this? Does not look like it. it does not like, not look like it at all. <laughs> It is quite uh, ridiculous going along at this speed amongst traffic in something quite so uncontrollable. The front wheels lifting off the ground. There is plenty of straight down here for this sort of uh, shenanigans. 240! We did it! 240 miles an hour. Now we've got to dodge a bus. Oh, we're off the motorway. Off the motorway. Bring it back down. I thought there was a speed camera along that road. Apparently not. <laughs> Oh, 240 miles an hour achieved by the Holden. Everything all kept under control as well. A little bit of time on the grass at a small wheelie at one point. That is good fun. <laughs> that is good fun weaving between traffic in this at those sorts of speed. Is yeah, I like I like that motorway as a uh, speed running section. That is very, very cool. Anyway, we have our benchmarks, really, in this series. The first vehicle 
to tackle the course and will achieve 240 miles an hour in a straight line. There is certainly lots of power coming from these uh, these engines in Horizon 3, so we are likely to see some mighty, mighty quick vehicles. However, that is going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.